Well, good morning. It's Sunday the 5th of September. I can't actually believe we're into September already. This year's fishing feels like a total blur. So I'm back at Raysbury after a month off. It was a really nice break. You know, I was looking forward to getting back, but I've had a total break from fishing. Uh, I don't know a great deal of what's gone on at Raysbury at all, other than the couple of guys that I've seen over the lake. Um, I've actually ended up in Springgates. Wasn't really the plan to go back in here, but the lake wasn't crazy busy, but there's a couple of swims I've got in mind now going into the autumn, and they were both taken, so until I see opportunities in those sort of areas, Springgates is always going to be on my radar. So it's been quite a quiet weekend. On the Friday night, one fish came out to my left, but other than that, I don't think anything else had come out. And then I did have one fish last night, a 27-12 common. It was actually a repeat, a fish that I caught last October at 29 pound from the exact same spot. So yeah, I think that's a sign for me that I need to start fishing some different areas, areas of the lake, definitely going into these colder months. So a nice welcome back, a nice to get one after losing those three on the trot. So yeah, so let's hope for another good autumn. It was real good for me on here last year. Um, you know, I'm not going to get over quite as much. I'm also training for my second half marathon, so I need to find a balance of not smashing myself to bits as well. So, yeah, it's going to be an interesting autumn, but I'm really looking forward to it. So I'll show you the footage of the common now, and I'll catch you on my next trip. back at Raysbury so I'm now going into my second night and the lake's really busy um, after quite an eventful journey getting down here it took me over two hours to get down surprisingly Blake's was free so if I could have chose a swim to go in I mean really now going into this time of year this is the sort of area that I want to get into so I know the spot's pretty well in here so I managed to get the rods out pretty quick and I see fish in the evening and then waking up early this morning again I see fish in front of me but they are shown very tight to the island and the lake's busy so I do feel like they're sort of hugging the areas that they know they're safe. Um, I've decided to move two rods tonight. I was fishing two rods quite close either side of me. I've decided to move one more towards the island where I've seen fish and then the right hand rod I've moved out again a little bit more into the lake where I've seen shows so I've only seen one fish come out this morning or this afternoon other than that I think the lake's fishing quite slow surprisingly for September I mean last year September fished really well on here um, so yeah fingers crossed going in tonight it would be uh, be nice to pinch one from here definitely as I haven't fished this area since May so yeah fingers crossed and hopefully I'll be catching up with you with a Raysbury carp shortly Raysbury and unbelievably I managed to get back into Blake's for a second weekend so nothing occurred last weekend it was a bit of a strange scenario I see fish but it just didn't seem to happen to my knowledge only a couple of fish come out across the lake and I left a little bit deflated so I was really hoping to get back into the swim I worked like a Trojan all week 
to try and get away early Friday in the hope of getting a good peg. I managed to get away from work at one o'clock, got to the lake for half two, had a really good journey. And yeah, I couldn't believe it, Blake's was free. So got straight in and it looked really good. There was lots of bubbling going on in front. I took a bit of a gamble. I decided to go quite heavy with the bait and I see fish going into the night. So I went to bed quite confident. So when I woke up this morning, I hadn't had anything. I see fish straight away, and then one show right over the right hand rod, which was in close, and then yeah, just pulled away. Typical September's morning. We've had this absolute cracker. He's only 18 pound, but wow, what a beautiful carp. Really, really nice one. I made up with this. I'd choose this over an ugly 30 pounder every time. Really, really happy. So yeah, like I say, I've put in, put in quite a little bit. I've put in quite a lot of bait, which I don't normally do here. So it'll be interesting to see how the next few hours pan out. There's a few fish showing out there still. So I've got the rod back out. I'm gonna slip them back quickly. Yeah, hopefully I've got a chance of a couple more. Made up with him though. What a beautiful carp. Well this weekend session's coming to a close and it looks like it's going to end with just the one fish, that pretty little mirror. I'm absolutely made up with him, he weren't a monster but absolutely spot on in my eyes and everything that a carp should be. And I feel like I should have caught another one to be honest. I've had fish on me, um, going through the night, I heard quite a few fish and then waking up this morning, they definitely weren't showing in quite as close as they were the day before. So I thought if I got one it would be on the longer rod. but. Nothing's really materialised. The weather has changed a bit. The wind started blowing in. It definitely feels a little bit cooler and fresher this morning. So there's still the odd fish showing, but I've waited out about as long as I want to. Um, I've got to get back. I've got to run 10 miles today. So uh, yeah, I think it's time to call it a day, but I'm chuffed to get one after the blank in here last weekend. It's nice to get one and catch one down this end as I haven't done a lot of time down this end all year. So yeah, looking forward to getting back. I'm not here next weekend. Uh, so my next trip will be at the start of October and yeah, hopefully we can get amongst them. So yeah, I'll catch up with you then. Well it's been a while now since we've done anything like this to the camera and that's because I've not actually returned to Raysbury since that last trip when I caught that upper double mirror. Um, this is really because I've just been busy. Um, because of Covid last year, you know, my social life was pretty non-existent. You couldn't really do anything with friends and family so that was great for fishing. But the nature of Raysbury, not being that close to home, if I've got weekend plans, I can't get over there. So as I mentioned, I had a half marathon and yeah, just general bits with family and friends. And it's been really nice to be able to do that. So I knew that I wasn't gonna to get to Raysbury for a while. And I thought rather than just do the odd trip here and there, I thought to myself, right, I'm going elsewhere till Christmas and I'll return to Raysbury in January and I'll fish it till, till the end of the season in mid-March. And it's a little bit gutting because it looks like it's fished really well this autumn, better than it did last year. I mean, o o October was quite slow there last year and a lot of guys struggled. So maybe I missed out on some good fishing and some big fish, but you can't do it all. So uh, what I've basically done is return to the club water that I spoke about last year, home of the big common and I'm really enjoying my fishing. I've not caught as many as I did last autumn, for sure. Um, 
So I come back here around the third week of September. So uh, my first fish was the first day of autumn on the 22nd of September. I caught a 32 common um, from a swim that I've done well in the past. Uh, an immaculate fish, unfortunately it was a repeat, but just the welcome back I needed. A lot of my friends have moved on from here now and the odd trip that I've done here in the summer, I just felt very disconnected from the lake and I just didn't really enjoy it. So that was a much needed buzz to return to. Um, so since then, I, I've, I've done a little bit more fishing in this zone and I felt the big one would probably come from this area, which it did probably two weeks later from the swim next door. And because of that, I then decided to start fishing the middle area. So through this time, the swim down the other end of the lake, what you'd call probably the shallowest end of the lake, has got a little bit of weed down there. There's very little weed in the lake now. And that weed bed is starting to die. Uh, typical of autumn, you know, those dying weed beds, those fish love harvesting that. And the swim had started to do a few fish down there. It had fished slow but prior to that. But a lot of the fish were small. So I'd kept my eye on it, but in my mind, that big one wasn't coming from that zone. And the area I'd been fishing doesn't do loads of fish, but it's notorious for doing the better fish. So I'd kept plugging away in that zone. Um, and then my next fish came, someone was in that swim, which forced me to fish the area that I'd caught the 32. Um, and it was the first chilly night of the autumn. It wasn't a frost, but it just had a bit of bitterness in the air. And there was a few shows out in the zone I was fishing, and then out of the blue, left hand rods uh, rattled off, and real hard battle on the braid. Flew out long, found some weed out there, then kited left, and there's some, some snags down to my left side to really clamp down on it. Got the upper hand of it, got in the net, and when I flicked on the head torch, it was a mirror, and I was just buzzing. I mean, there's a four, maybe five mirrors in this lake. It's predominantly all commons, and I actually photoed that mirror last autumn. That's the one and only mirror I've ever seen on the bank out of the lake, and yeah, I caught it. So yeah, just over 25 pound. Pictures will never do it justice. It just was awesome. Like all these starburst scales on it, just different colours. Its mouth was immaculate. Just yeah, the real, real cool carp. Um, and then the following week, I returned to that swim, uh, caught a 22 pound common, a nice one. Just had like a like a little twisted tail. Uh, quite quite a funny little fish. Um, and again, a couple more had come out down that end. So uh, it. It was starting to bother me a bit because I thought it's doing a lot of fish down there. Um, and then what really threw me was a couple of the better fish then got caught down there. And I thought maybe it could happen, but even if I wanted to fish that area, I couldn't have. That, so that's, that's the thing. You know, I'm only doing evenings over here. I'm doing the odd Saturday where I'm doing a slightly longer trip. Um, but that swim has been taken. You know, everybody on here is no fool. They know them fish are harvesting that weed and people have been here you know, the people that are getting here are getting here earlier than me and getting in that swim. So anyway, come down yesterday, um, Guy Fawkes night, and uh, yeah, my, my friend caught a big one out of there. So he's caught it before. Um, he was gutted for me, but it was awesome to see it. It's always awesome to see it. So, you know, we, we got her weighed up. I, I got a photo of her on the mat and uh, yeah, sent her back. So it came from the zone I didn't think it was gonna come from, but that's fishing for you so um, it hasn't deflated me uh, if anything it's fired me up even more and I'm really enjoying it and that's the main thing you know it's, it's I think maybe I got a little bit complacent over Raysbury chasing numbers a little bit and it's not always the best thing for your fishing you know and that's what I love with this place each fish is so hard earned so you catch a double out of here the buzz is just as big as catching one of the big old ones um, and there's a lot of other fish in here that I'd love to catch as well so it's not all about that big and there's a lot of other big fish in here um, so you know I'm, I'm just hungry and motivated to, to try and catch whatever I can out of here really um, you know and I think we've got a real good portion of fishing left so as I say I'm going to keep fishing it hard till Christmas you know I learned my lesson last year. I pulled off when I shouldn't have, and my friend Jack went and caught it at a huge weight. So I'm not gonna make that mistake this year. If I don't catch it, at least I can say I've given it a real good go. Um, it's very difficult to get any footage over here, hence this is the first little catch-up piece I've done in a long time. A lot of the time, obviously now, now we've uh, sort of moved in, into 
the late the, the later stages of autumn um, it's getting dark a lot earlier so when I get over in the evening I'm the main thing is getting those rods out before dark um, and uh, you know there's a lot of traffic over here so it's quite difficult to actually film anything so I will try and film what I can when I can um, Going forward in, into the next few weeks, as I say, I'm going to fish here till Christmas. I'll return to Raysbury in the new year. Um, I've got a trip with Tom from Avid next week. Uh, a highly stocked water. I'm really looking forward to it. You know, we get on really well and uh, hopefully we can get a few bites and uh, put a few on the bank. Um, so, yeah, really looking forward to that. I'm going to try and get a couple of perch trips in over the winter as well. Um, got a couple of friends that are right into their predator fishing. So, uh, yeah, it would be nice to... Uh, to nail a real real big perch this winter um, but yeah I'm just really hungry for my carp fishing at the minute so I don't really see any reason to go over into into the predator fishing too much um, yeah so as I say I've got no footage of any of those fish so I will just show you the pictures after this and uh, I'll try and keep you updated with my journey as I go so yeah I hope you're all having a good autumn so far and uh, yeah hopefully I'll be showing you a few of these real big commons but yeah, I'll just keep trying for the time being, so I'll catch you soon. Well, as I mentioned, I'd be popping down to Dog Lane Fishery in Warwickshire with Tom and Avid, which is going through some bits that are in the pipeline with Avid soon and we've only been here for probably an hour or so. We see signs early when we got here. The guys that's been here for the weekend hadn't actually caught much at all. We've both got one. Tom had a koi. And I've just had this wicked 21 pounder. Gave me an awesome scrap. Nice to both get off the mark early. So yeah, hopefully we're showing you a few more of these lovely dog laying fish. Awesome start. Well, it's been pretty hectic so far. We've only been here for probably three, maybe four hours. I've had three now, Tom's had two. Uh, he's had one just under 30 pound, and I've now had another two lovely mid-20s. They're beautiful carp. They're certainly on the spot, so it looks like we're on for a good trip. We got some brace shots of the last two, so I thought I'd film this one. 25-12. Cracking example of the fish in this fishery. Beautiful cut. Wow. Happy days. Certainly looks like we're on for a few more. So we're going to get this one back and get prepared for the next onslaught of them. Awesome. It's been a pretty hectic first night here at Dog Lane. We've had multiple fish between us throughout the night, taking fish up to upper 20s. Real good average stamp for fish. Topped off this morning by this cracking 25 pounder, which I think so far is the pick of a bunch. Have a look at that. What an awesome carp, November colours. Started to slow down a little bit this morning. We've noticed some fish showing on the back of the wind. So I think we've got to rest the spots for a little while. Go around there with some rods, a couple of small bags, just cast at the shows. And then we can pick off a couple of bonus bites before moving back to the baited spots this evening. So, yeah, we're well happy. Hoping for a slightly bigger fish. There's a few thirties in the lake, so hopefully one of them pays us a visit.
Well, the action here at Dog Lane has been nothing short of phenomenal. We've just kept going with the bites. As I mentioned yesterday, we moved for a couple of hours in the hope of nicking a couple of quick bites and resting the spots. And when we returned, Tom got straight back on the fish, landing six on the bounce. And I was waiting, thinking, have they moved off? And then once it started, the action's just not stopped for me. I've just slipped back a 28 pounder. I've had these two ready to show you. First, it's awesome common. Just a few ounces short of 30 pound. Lovely carp, really not happy though. that awesome carp I've got another one in the sling there's a little bit special quite an old fish and a little bit bigger than this one unbelievable trip one I'm not sure I'll better for a long time been really good fun Tom's just slipped back a low 30 himself unbelievable fishing let's get this one back and I'll show you the next one Well, as I say, we've got a real old one here, probably one of the oldest fish in the lake. A fish I'm led to believe is known as the fossil. Really long fish, gave me a really good scrap. An absolutely beautiful carp, looking awesome in her November colours. Just over 30 pound and a few ounces. Real character fish. I can imagine this a target fish in a small little mere. But instead, swimming around with a big variety of fish here in Dog Lane. Just don't know what you're gonna get. Each one's been a surprise. We've had a huge variety, bite from bite. Made up to finish with this one. Absolutely awesome trip. It's time to finish the autumn journal. So I'm actually out fishing for the evening. So I've been out on a casting lesson with Terry Edmonds today. I've known Terry for quite a few years now and I've wanted to do a lesson for the last couple of years, but due to COVID, that's not been possible. If you're thinking about doing a lesson, I can't recommend it enough. He's a lovely bloke and there isn't a thing that he doesn't know about casting. He's been in the industry for a long time now. He's worked with just about everybody possible. We put 60 yards on my cast. I wanted it to be as much like a fishing scenario as possible so I used line instead of braid and yeah we made some big improvements and I learned a lot so like I say I, I can't recommend it enough so since we last spoke I've done that trip with Tom to Dog Lane which was great we caught loads of fish it was good fun over the club water things have been pretty slow since the big and come out I think one maybe two fish have been out I'm plugging away in the area that I hope it will happen. It does have form for this time of year, so you just never know. There's a lot of big fish in here, and I'll keep plugging away on here till Christmas. And then going into the new year, I'm looking to head back to Raysbury. Hopefully with these casting improvements, I'll be able to get out into the middle a lot easier, uh, as I feel that's where the fish are going to be and where they were last winter, really. And already from what I've seen from others, it looks like they're in those sort of zones. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to getting back over there. It's been a while now. It's obviously going to be quite different to when I was last there and in terms of the journal going into the new year I've got myself a GoPro uh, I'm hoping this will give me more sort of point and shoot stuff I can get time lapses in night lapses and just hopefully give me a bit more of what I feel that the journals lacking uh, I'm also in the process of upgrading my editing software which should hopefully make the whole thing a lot better so yeah we're definitely looking to make some improvements going into the new year uh, we've not had the the following that we got last year i know things are quite different uh, you know a lot of people were at home and watching videos and stuff so as always though i'm really grateful to, for the support i'm looking forward to going into the new year so yeah i hope you have a great christmas and i'll catch up with you in the new year